I have possibly nerve that can damage the head. Because remember, I was going around with my mouth closed and pinched it. My legs have been swollen like pieces of wood. I couldn't move, I couldn't walk after the liberation. It was so miserable to live after the liberation, you know. Thousands of thousands of friends of mine die after the liberation because the American gave us so much food in our system couldn't digest in Lada, you know. People get the dysentery and they die. I was a lucky when I survived. And I stay in this hospital for two weeks. And I gain a little bit. My health took me the courage to go out. I live in a little town, in an uptown prison, a beautiful mountain city, and I went to the market. You couldn't imagine what happened to me. And this morning, they are calling this is 46 years ago. You know, in three weeks will be exactly 46 years which I have been liberated. In three weeks for today, will be the 26th, three weeks before the 26th of April, and I have been liberated on the 26th of April. And if I recall the moment when I was walking on the marketplace, you know, they have a beautiful fountain in the middle. They have some figurine. They have the, the god of, from, from the Greeks, believe the god of the sea, Jesus, Zeus, standing in the middle with a harp and fish around. And for the amount of fish water I was playing around, I was standing, you know, just admiring the statue. In a minute, I hear children laughing, like somebody took a knife of me. I shake up and said, children laughing? You know, six long years, I didn't see and I didn't hear a child was laughing. I saw children when they killed them, humiliate them, you know, rip them in pieces. And here I say, I hear voices from children laughing and playing. I drew around and I saw three German girls playing <coughs> one. And I was wondering, I started to cry. He swallowed the eye of Crutchwood and pat on the, on the head face. And I was looking at it, I started to cry loud. And I asked myself, why this have to live in now? One and a half million of our children have to die only because she, this little one was born to a German parent. And when I was crying and looking at this little child, a German woman came out, probably the mother for this child, I ripped the child away with me. I was looking at her wondering, do they still have the feeling? Because I saw in my lifetime, the sex long year, I saw German women here. Yeah, you know what? You know, conflict so much pain and suffering to the little ones, killing them. And here I saw in this moment a German women, and I was thinking, did still they have feeling? And I cried and cried and I went back to the hospital, you know. I couldn't sleep two, three nights I was crying. And then it, I closed my eyes for the picture of the suffering, you know, from the torture which I went through. You couldn't imagine how terrible it is to live with memories like this. Yes, I have memories. I'm not crying now. You know, in the beginning when I was standing in front for an hour, yes, I was crying. Because this was my memories which I shared with you. My pain. This is a part of my life. Six long years of suffering and pain which I went through. Yes, I survived. And you know, not this, which my life, which I find out that my wife is alive, I would commit suicide. I went in apathy because I didn't know what to do, where to go. When I look around, the faces for my past have been gone. Nobody to share, nobody to talk. A German language was to me like a knife because with this language they killed my loved one. And I was sitting in the hospital trying, you know, to forget it, just recalling my past. I was lucky that I find out that my wife is alive. You know, 1945. In Europe, people have been moving from one country to another country. Remember, in Germany, they had five million slaves from Europe. And after the liberation, the American army was, administration was so beautiful. They tried to help us. They tried to 
they're repatriating that back to the continent of which we come to find our land. And some people from Poland came to the city and told me that my wife is alive. The minute I find out that she's alive, like a new life came. I start to cry for happiness, a face from the days of yesterday. I will have a go in my life. You could imagine when I came to my house, I went back to Poland. And this was in June, the end of June, and I recall the moment when I saw my wife, she was my wife, and this time she was my sweetheart, and when I saw her on the street walking, I was frozen, I couldn't move. And I was looking, don't believe me, but I saw the shoes, and I started to cry, and I thought, and I kissed her, and I started to cry, and cry, and cry, and I was telling yes, it is this, is she is alive. We went to Port, back to Germany, and we married. You know, you couldn't imagine how miserable it was to live in Germany. After the deliberation, my wife, knowing me that I was supposed to be a doctor, was trying to push me, persuade me to go back to college. In in beginning of October 1945, I went to the University of Munich, and I was standing in front of a commission that tried to test me, I remember. And then they asked me a question, I started to cry. I have a memory lost for two years. I suffer so much. In some time, you know, the suffering, you know, have a, is doing something to your system. One in a half year, I didn't remember nothing. I ran away. In front from the board of the director, from the, you know, members of this committee, I came home and I said to my wife, I don't remember, and I started to cry. Two years later, I went at nine and started to receive whole pages, you know, of the book in Hebrew, in Latin, in German, in Polish, and I started to cry. I said to my wife, my memory came back to me, and I cried. I didn't go back to the university because I was afraid. But I have to share another moment with you. You know, when I recall the moment after the liberation, when I was sick, I was afraid to go to a German doctor. A nice American captain took me to Swiss doctor. He said to me, don't be afraid. He was taking care of you. Two weeks, I was under the care of this man. You know, I went through typical kind of treatment. I, he had I can put your treatment, I can put your treatment, you know, you put a needle on this side, and this side, and this side, and this side, and this is already four to six, get it in, when you pay. I was so happy. You see, I was afraid, like I said, to go to the German doctor, that they treat me. I was afraid, because I saw what the German doctors had been doing. You can't imagine, remember, everything which I know about the Holocaust, beside my pain, I find out after the Holocaust. Remember, in the time of the Holocaust, we have been the grind meat in the machine of destruction. We have been the victims. Remember, I was confined to a place that that can fence run, you know, watchtowers for each side, machine guns, in a water run that you couldn't move. Be it possible that I have, that they have another death come two miles away and I didn't know what's going on because the German concealed everything. When they took a transport of people to a death camp, the soldiers didn't come to the same city. They went to somewhere else. Like I said, you know, the time is short. I just relate to you about 40 minutes, but it's impossible. It's only a short time to share with you. Sex room here, pain and suffering. I would have pushed it for another reading you, you people. When you go home, sit down for a minute and think about this which I share with you. In the kitchen, in the kitchen, because when you remark, I'm learning how to relate to you people. Because it's not so easy for me to find the word that you can understand, understand, you know, the difference in the age. When you and I are learning how to relate in the 